Hello my lovely Fast Tube friends and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a Stitch With Me. This is a very long awaited Stitch With Me. Um, I've had so many requests asking me to work on some of the specialty stitches on my Evening in the Park um, as a Stitch With Me so that you can just see how I do it. It's not really as difficult as you might think. So as you can see, this is the chart for those that haven't been with me before. This is the Chatelaine uh, designed by Martina Weber. Evening in the Park Mandela Garden. It was a formerly a stitch with me, so it's broke into sections. I'm quite lucky. I, I, went, I went more on the cautious way and I ordered the paper chart here and I also got the electronic chart as well so that I had both and I'm quite good, I'm quite impressed that I did because it's actually worked out to be very, very helpful to have both versions. So the last time you saw this, I had done these three lanterns. I've recently just done the tree and I thought I'd done all the specialty stitches on the other side. So I need to crack on and get these ones done in this corner section. So as I'm actually gonna do it today, I thought, you know, I started it and I was like, what am I doing? Everyone asked me to show them. So, you know, it's no different me sitting here stitching versus showing you all at the same time. So let me scoot you down. I've done all of the cross stitching and it's left me with all of the gaps. Now this is the difference between just doing random specialty stitches in the middle of a bit of fabric. Even I would get confused then and I'd be like, well, I'm out of my depth. But the fact that this has left me holes and spaces so that I know how big everything needs to be, it gives me my guide. It gives me like the reference point, which then makes the specialty stitches so, so much easier. So also within the Chatelaines, they're very, very good in giving you um, the breakdowns of how the stitches are. So here in the book, these are all the specialty stitches. It gives you a guide. It tells you like well, up through one, down two, up three, gives you arrows and directions so that none of these stitches are overly difficult. And as long as you have the space in the fabric left, it makes it a little bit easier to fathom out where you're going and what you're doing. Let me get to my page. Okay, so to do these, these little Algerian, Algerian eyelets, we are using this thread, which says, let me scoot you down so you can see. So we're using a Gloriana Princess Pearl Petite. It's 100% silk, and it looks slightly different to a normal thread. So this is what it looks like. It's very, very shiny, very, very, look, you can see it. It's got such a glossy, but it's actually the, the type of thread that it is that makes it the way it is. If you can see, it's like a, it's almost like a pearl cotton. It, 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 that is sort of the consistency of it. So that is what we're gonna use to do our Algerian eyelets. I'm gonna follow my instructions because I always do. I, I've already started this, I have to confess, so I'll show you the next one as we go along. Now, one of the things that I have learned when doing the Algerian eyelets is keeping an element of tension when, when, when you're doing them. So I will hold at the back to hold the tension like so. And by keeping the tension, and it said on there that we needed to pull them taut as well, because we want like a lace, a lace hold type of effect. And that is what we're getting, because the more I, and I'm not pulling tight tight, it's not, I'm not doing like, I'm not really tugging at it, I'm just sort of, holding it in place really. And on this particular idea in eyelet, it's saying that everything with this, with this type of strand, I need to go in every second hole. Now, 
when you like look at this, when it's saying every second hole, it doesn't mean it's every hole counts on, on the on the design. That doesn't make any sense to you, does it? Okay. So when you're working on an even weave, you've got a hole there, a hole in the middle and a hole again because you're going across two. So you're stitching over two on even weave. But when they give you the instructions to do your specialty stitches, they include every hole. So for every, for every hole that they, that you go over, that's, that's what they're, so that when they're saying that you want to go in every second, it means, so I've just come up here and gone into the middle. So the next hole up would be the middle of that cross, which I don't want to use. I want to go to the corner of the cross because that would be my second hole. And literally, it's as simple as that. All I'm doing, when, when, I, when I bring my thread down, I, I just tend to sort of have my hand underneath to keep it taut. And I keep it taut and out the way just while I'm bringing my needle up, just to hold that tension on the thread. Everyone has a different way that they do things. But I do like to make sure that I have the tension on the thread as I bring my needle back up the next, the next hole. And I'm just giving it a little tug. It's not, I'm not really, basically my tug is more sort of when I'm holding it at the back of the fabric rather than actually pulling it. I only really give it another little tug as I bring the needle back up again. You see, we're making this nice little hole in the center. And again, I'm just gonna, I'm holding the thread underneath. I'm not pulling the thread. I'm just making it so that the tension is still on, on the thread. There we go, we're nearly done this one. So when it's saying every second hole, basically it's every corner of one of the stitches that I've already done is all I'm doing to create this. There we go. One Algerian eyelet completed. Now, I'm not sure whether I've got enough thread. Oh, I have got enough thread, so we can go on and do the next one. But what I'll do is I will just carry my thread. So at this point, see now if I let, if I take the tension off of that thread, can you see what's happening? Let me see if I put my hand behind it. Can you see that? So I will go to the back and just secure at the back of this Nigerian eyelet. And at no point do you want to sort of take, carry your thread across the hole because then you'll be able to see it through this hole. Do you see? Because you can see my hand every time I, I do that. So you don't, you want to make sure that when you, when you now secure this thread, you need to stay to the left or wherever your, wherever your finished section is. So I always keep my, keep my thread pulled in the direction. So as you can see, if I, if I finish the thread over there, it sort of goes across the hole which would then show. So wherever my thread came up, which my thread came in this direction, I need to secure it over this side so that it secures it, but it keeps it out of the way. So for me to do that, literally all I do, there's, there's nothing fancy that goes on here. I just literally finish it like I'd finish a normal thread. But I won't actually finish this thread because I'm gonna use it for the next, for the next one. So literally, I've just secured it underneath at the back so that it doesn't, it can't go floppy. So the one next to it, so all I'm going to do is just run, run, carry my thread across there. Nothing fancy. I, I don't care about how messy my back gets, as you can see. All right, okay, let's move you down. Now, I don't know if I can squeeze this down a bit. I need to find like a happy medium with the camera. 
not too close that I can't turn my work, but not so far away that I can't show you what I'm doing. That might be better. Okay, let's, let's see if this works. Okay, so that's our first one done. So now we've, we've brought our needle up. And again, so the way that you work this is it said that it needs to go over every two. And everyone's going to be like, well, how do you know where the middle is? Well, it's very simple. I've got three squares. Let's see if I'm close enough for you. That's as close as I can get it. Okay, so this is square one, square two, square three. So to find the middle is literally the middle of square three. So that's the, that's the middle point going across ways. And we're three up, so all I need to do is go to the middle of that square, which is the middle of that. So that is basically the center point for our Algerian islet. Okay, so, but we don't want to go up there. We want to go up from a corner. So we're going to start in the bottom right hand corner, left hand corner, sorry, bring it up. That's the middle of the third one. That's the middle of the third one across. So I'm just going to come down and give it a little tug. And then I'm going to go every second hole. Basically, it's the beginning and end of every, of every stitch that I've already got. Nothing technical. And again, I'm not pulling, I'm not pulling massively hard here. I'm literally just holding the thread back. to give it a bit of tension on the behind. But it's as simple as this. There's, no, there's nothing technical about some of these specialty stitches. I know they look, now see, if I was trying to do these specialty stitches, like I said, on a bit of fabric with, with nothing around it, I think it would confuse me. But the bit I like about, well, this particular Chatelaine at least, I'm pretty sure that they're all very similar, you do all the cross stitch first, which actually leaves you the space or the spaces for you to work your specialty stitch, which actually takes a lot of the guesswork out because you know the space, you know the hole that you're left with and you've got to fill that with this particular specialty stitch. So at that point, you just follow your, follow your instructions and it all makes total sense. So yeah. It's as simple as that. And as you can see, at that point, you don't even have to really worry about, especially with Algerian eyelets, you don't even need to worry about counting because my, my holes are there, my space is there that I've got to fill. So I'm just going round in a circle. At every sort of top and bottom corner of my, of my squares. So there we go. That one's done. And just by giving it just a little bit of tension at the back is what makes my hole. I mean, some people give them a real good tug and make them really big. Um, I think, again, that's personal preference. The only thing that you do need to be careful of, like I said, so you can see here, if I, if I don't bring my thread right back out the way, you can see the thread at the back. And it doesn't look right, it doesn't look like you've got a hole. So if I was to end my thread over there, it wouldn't look right. So as long as I hold my needle over in the direction that my last, the last thread that went down, I hold that behind with my, thumb, with my finger. So I'm, I'm actually holding that thread out the way with my finger at the back with a small amount of tension on it. Oh, let me, let's turn you over. So you can see that this is the thread, that was where I was holding it with my finger. So all I need to do is make sure that I finish my thread. Oh, she says. You can see the hole. I just need to make sure that I finish my thread over this side. As long as I finish this over this side, it won't cover the hole. So because we're sort of getting close to the end of the thread, I'm going to secure it underneath my other stitches and again 
I'm not the sort of person that worries too much about how pretty it looks at the back. There we go. So there we go. So that's the second one. Number one, number two. So what's next? It looks like that's one now. And that's one now. So we'll start on this one, I think. So we come back to our very, very dinky little thread. As you can see, they don't give you much of this. So I'm trying to be as sparing as I can. Though it, I can't say I'm particularly frugal with my threads, even the silks. I try to be. Okay. So thread up our needle. Absolutely love working on this chart. This this pattern. Every time I pick it up and do something, it's like, oh that's different. <laughs> oh that's a bit different. Apart from when I'm doing trees and lanterns or I'm doing bits that that's the only thing. Once you've done everything once, unless you sort of leave a nice big gap before you do it again, it's like things can get a little samey. But it will be worth it at the end. Okay, so let me just consult with my with my chart once more, make sure that I'm getting this right. Yep, so this one. Okay, so we're gonna work on this one here. There we go. So again, I'm just going to start in this bottom left hand corner. It's no different to last time. I know that I need to come across to the middle of that square and the middle of the middle square, which is there. And that's the middle of the Algerian eyelet, Algerian eyelet. And then I'm just going to go every second hole all the way around. And I'm just giving it just a little bit of tension at the back for when I'm doing my up so that it doesn't slacken off too much. And again, just hold that at the back. And because I've got the stitching, you can see, see the, the guesswork sort of took out of it. You don't really need to worry about, oh, you know, I don't know, is that there or is that because the hole's there. I've got to fill the space. I know what type of stitch it is. So as long as it's, as long as it's meant to fill the hole, but that's completely different than just doing these stitches in the middle of a bit of fabric. I mean, even I would get a little confused then sometimes like, well, where does it, you know, where does it start? Where does it, where does it stop? Yeah, I'm not happy with that. Hold on. All right, let's keep that tension. There, that's better. I mean, some people are, are very sort of particular about how they do their their specialty stitches. Me. I'm just like, well, it will be what it will be. Once, once I know what shape it's supposed to be, I can't say that I spend too much time sort of laying the threads or, or anything like that. I'm, I'm a bit more like, well, you know, even if it's not perfect, I'm fine with that. I'm not always a, a perfect person and neither is my stitching <laughs> and that's fine it doesn't need to be like something that the royal school of needlework would do it would be nice of course but it isn't and i'm fine with that oh you know i'm and it, this this piece has been like my learning curve i've learned a lot from doing this chatelaine 
you know, a huge amount actually. But did I ever think that I would, I would do a Chatelaine? No, not in the onset. They frightened the life out of me. I might, you know, I was in awe of all the people that was, that were doing them, and I was like, I'd never be able to do one of those. Look at me now. Could be you. You know, if, if all you've been worried about is doing the specialty stitches, you can see it's it's actually a lot easier when you're working with a gap that you need to fill with a specialty stitch that they're telling you to use rather than just doing it over here like in a big open space and you don't really know where to start and you really don't know where to finish um yeah then that that even for me that would be a bit daunting right i'm going to pause there for a minute okay so i've just consulted just to make sure that i was doing everything correctly in the right places it's the only thing when you do this it's sort of I always make sure that I'm forever checking with my chart just to make sure because these are not the stitches that you want to have to try and pick out once you've already put them in. So the chart says, <laughs> so we've done one, two, three. I've carried my thread over to the back of this one and this is another one here. And I think that is all in this thread. And then we change for their heads. So I'm going to start in my bottom left hand corner. And again, to find my center, there's three across, so I go the middle of the third one up and the middle of the third one across. That is dead center of, of that square. And that's, that's what I like about doing it this way. These specialty stitches are so much easier because it takes the guesswork out. So all I'm doing Again, just giving it a little tug, a little bit more pressure than you normally would just to pull it as I pull it through to the back and then give it a little bit of tension on the back as I bring it back up again. It can get a bit fiddly because I've got like a dominant hand. <laughs> so I have one hand because I, I I stitch this way, I have one hand that I like to sort of, I like to have at the front and one that I like to have at the back. But I do like to have just a little bit of tension on the thread at the back. Just so that when I, when I sort of take the tension off to then do the next stitch, it doesn't do this. I don't like that. So I give it a little bit of tension at the back. So that as I bring this up. Oh, she says, oh, no, don't jump off the needle now. It's the only thing. Silk's fabulous to stitch with. They're a little slippery sometimes. Especially when you start getting to the near the bottom of the thread. So again, giving that a bit of a bit of tension. And up he comes. So I, I sort of give it, the only way to describe it is, see this is why I don't like that. I don't like it when I don't hold it down. I like to give the thread a little bit of tension at the back. And then as I bring the thread up, I don't know if you can see it, is it going out of focus? I sort of give it another little tug, but I'm not really, I'm not really tugging it, if you know what I mean. It's, it's more of a, just a firm, a firm grip. Which is what's creating that hole. In the, in the middle. And then here goes the last one. Here comes the sun. And that is our final one. Silk and Colour SN2 is this, which is like a normal thread. So, Refer back to my instructions and it says 
all eyelet um, all eyelets which use a normal thread, so this would be classed as a normal thread, are worked with one plier and stitched into every hole of the fabric. Okay, so slightly different way of doing it this time. See, this is what I mean. As long as you read each section that comes with your chatelaine, as long as you read your instructions, it's actually really not as difficult. So I'm gonna do yeah, that much. So we want one strand of this. Okay, let's separate that. I love these silks. <laughs> I love them all. So easily pleased. Okay, come on, where are you? Go this end, might be easier. There we go, there you are. They look so fine like this. Okay, so we want we want to do going in every single hole, okay. Okay, so we're going to now make four little rounds, four little wound ones, which I think dum, 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 dum. where do they go? Okay, so they go in here, right. So let me square you down. Now this one's a little bit more different. So you can see where my needle is here. So I'm here in these squares. So we've got this square, this square, and this square. So these squares here, I've actually got four little eyelets in. And each eyelet takes up two, two squares across by two squares down. So that is my... So again, I'm going to do exactly the same as I did before. But this time, instead of going into every other hole, which would be every actual leg of a, of a square, we're going even into the ones that are in the middle. So I'm going to come up here. What did I say? There are two squares up. Yeah. Two squares up. So we want dead centre. One, two, three, so that will be dead center because it's the center, right. Now the difference with this one versus the other one is that we're gonna actually go into every single, every single hole and do the same thing, give it a little tug. But it's not quite so difficult when you're doing, when you're doing it like this because you're going into every hole. Okay. So that's the equivalent. So I've done three stitches there. So that's the equivalent of one square. So one. and that's three so that's right the way along the front so now we want to come down and literally I'm just going into every single hole to create this And you can see that the hole's starting to get created now. So it takes a little while with these smaller ones to get round to where you need to be. And then you start to see the hole, which makes it a little bit clearer as to where you're going. Especially when I've picked a fabric that this actually blends really well with. 
but that blend sometimes can make it a little bit tricky without a bit of magnification or lighting. I'm actually doing this without anything. Okay, so that's the centre of that one. There you go. But again, because I'm left with the space, she says, come on. Because I'm left with the space that I need to fill, it makes it so much easier. It sort of takes most of the guesswork out of doing these specialty stitches. Even these ones that look a bit more tricky, but they're really not. Right, where is that? Okay, one more. One more, there we go. Okay. So that is one of four there. So what I will do now is because I want to make sure that that's secure, instead of starting at the bottom of these two, because obviously now that thread potentially could hang out like this, which we don't want it to do. We want it held back. I'll start my next one in this top left corner because it will automatically pull that thread where I want it, see? So again, we need to find our center for the next, the next one of these because there's four like literally all together. So again, we need the middle, so it's two, two down and two across, like so. And then all I'm going to do is do exactly the same thing and go round. It's just a bit more tricky to to see with the smaller ones. That's three. That's four. That's five. So then we want number six. And for me, I just, rather than trying to look too hard, I just look wherever the, wherever the thread came out last. Because it can be a little bit tricky to see where you are. Okay, um. That one. There we go. Once I get round onto the other side, I tend to find that it speeds up. But like I say, again, as soon as I go onto an area where there's no, there's no guidance, I really have to sort of think about it and think about what I'm doing. Come back here, you. Yeah. That's the middle. I don't know if you can hear Fudge snoozing away on the sofa there. Okay, where are you? There you are. one on this side. Okay. So that's my two Igerian eyelets here and now I need to go round and do these ones but the problem I've got is I can't carry my thread because it'll cover that it'll cover that up. So I need to finish my thread on the side here. I'm gonna hopefully not bash you around too much. 
Let me zoom you out. So as you can see, I'm still holding the thread where, it, where it's coming out, which is here. And I want to be on this side, but my thread finishes and needs to be secured this way. So all I'm going to do is just secure the thread over to this side. Now I'm sure that, you know, if you're a, a very professional stitcher, you probably would have strategically placed all of your Nigerian eyelets in such a way that you wouldn't have to finish on one side to then carry the thread round to the other side, but that's not me. And I don't care what the, look, what the back looks like, personally. I don't think it's that bad, is it? It's not, I don't think it's that bad. I mean, obviously it's no oil painting by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> Okay, so, so bring you back down. So now, where's my thread? Down at the bottom here. So I'm going to start in my bottom left hand corner. That's the middle. And then now this side is much easier because I've got a guideline this side to work from because the stitch is already in there. So literally now I just go round again. And with this one, although they say do it tight, I don't like to do it too tight. But just by going up and down into the same hole with a little bit of tension on that thread is creating the hole for me. I'm not having to sort of really, really tug on it. I think I'd be too frightened to break this thread even if I did tug on it that hard. Okay, so that's the last stitch for the upwards because we need to leave these two. So now we're gonna come across gives me the guideline that I need for this bit. And the last one. Yeah. There. So there we go again. And that is the next one. So Again, I need to make sure that my, my stitch stays out of the way and finishes in such a way that it doesn't interfere with the back. And then the final one, which goes here, there's my center. And I'm literally just gonna do exactly the same thing and go all the way around the, and just, constantly going back into the same hole in the middle. But you can see that there's not, whereas, you know, if you try to do specialty stitches on a blank bit of fabric, I think I would have to spend so much time really looking at what I'm doing and counting and whereas it sort of takes all the work out of it because you've got a space that you're filling. I wouldn't like to say how I'd get on if someone just said, fill us, you know, create your design using this from the center of this rather large big bit of fabric. I would be like, yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I 
I've done that one. Okay, in there. I think we've got one more. There we go. There. And we are complete. We have the four little Nigerian eyelets. So I've got a few more to go to fill this corner. Um, I think I've got to repeat these these four into this corner and a few more in this corner. But yeah, so there you go. That that is my my way of doing the specialty stitches. Um, I'm sure that there will be some people that hmm, would be looking on in horror at how badly I did that. Oh, what's going on? Oh, that's, that's because I haven't tied that down. I was like, oh no. <laughs> so yeah, so there you go. There you have it. That is my, my way of doing my specialty stitches. It is far from expert. I would never advocate to be an expert when it comes to anything like this. Um, but yeah, that's how I've got my head around it. But as you can see, it actually helps working on a design like this where you do your stitching of your main crosses, you get left with circles or squares or a gap, and you're just filling that gap with a specialty stitch. That, that makes, it takes all of the all of the worry away because it's like as long as my specialty stitch sort of resembles what it needs to look like and fills that hole then it can't be wrong and that's my way of sort of approaching it as long as you approach it with the you know if if, if you start to panic before you've even started then it it's just going to be panicky but when you're sitting there saying to yourself well that square there just needs to have an Nigerian eyelet in and just because the instructions say I have to do it this way, it doesn't actually matter. As long as I do an Algerian eyelet or Algerian eyelet one way, shape or form, it's not wrong. It's just how I want it. So, so yeah, I mean, I, the, this Chatelaine has been, it has been my, I don't know, it's, there's something about it. It's, I've been like on a journey with it. I feel like I've learned so much. I've learned ways of fixing problems. I've learned, you know, when something doesn't appear to make sense, read the instructions, not once, not twice, but three times. Um, because the chatelains are slightly different to most charts. Most charts, you just stitch what you see on a chart. Whereas with this, there's a lot of written instruction to tell you what thread to use, what thread to use with the back stitch, and, you know, which order to do everything. Um, so as long as you read the instructions, it's really not as difficult. But like I say, I've worked on charts where I've been asked to do like a, a specialty stitch in the middle of the fabric and it's been completely wrong and I've frogged it about a million times. But on this, I don't tend to have that problem because I know that as long as my, as long as my designated specialty stitch fits in that hole, it, it, it's right. So. <laughs> But there you go. So it was a long, long, long awaited requested video. I do hope it wasn't a total shambles. Um, and yeah, I'll try and do some more. I mean, I'll, the problem with the, with the Chatelaine is obviously there's a lot more thought that, that goes into actually stitching it. So you know what I'm like. I'm, I start to worry if I'm trying to talk to you and do my stitching at the same time because there's always the propensity for things to go very, very wrong. And this is not the project that I would like for that to happen on. It wouldn't be an easy fix. So, so yeah, hence the reason why I sort of try and stick with easier projects to stitch on. Um, but yeah, you never know. I, I might just pick certain sections that are easier to stitch on. But there you go. So thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for sitting and listening to me ramble about our Nigerian eyelets <laughs> on my Chatelaine. I will now sit back, relax and complete this section so that at least I've got something to show on my next monthly update. So thank you ever so much everyone and bye bye for now.